Welcome to the Art in the Easel. My name is Aaron Chisholm. I'm Gina Garcia. You, you're giggling already, Gina. What's <laughs> going on? Welcome, welcome to the first, uh, oh. welcome to the first podcast episode. First um, episode. Yeah this this has been a long journey, <laughs> long labor long journey. of love. Um, just to be transparent, just for all the artists out there, um, we yeah. probably recorded this first episode. This is our fourth time. Our fourth time recording it fourth time. over the span of like a month and a half. But I think it's necessary. Like we we learned a lot and we're finally here. But um, the art in the easel. We're here. The art in the easel. This is a podcast um, that we created that um, is essentially for the artists out there, um, but can be used for anyone. You don't necessarily so. have to be an artist to appreciate this podcast. But um, our goal is to really. Um, show the the easel side of folks, right? Um, mm-hmm. The art is always the thing that you know people see, um, mm-hmm. and we want to highlight, you know, what's behind the artist, um, what's the the spiritual component of an artist, and um, how do we get people to appreciate that from being consumers, mm-hmm. um, and then also um, how how to just live out your art. I don't know that that's like pretty much the premise of it. Do you have anything to add there, Gina? Yeah, I think. <laughs> Well, this might go into, like, further discussion down the road, but I think art is a result of self-discovery and inner work that's being done, because I feel like when you do so much self-discovery, you actually find within what you're really meant to do, and I think that's what art is. It's a manifestation of what your soul is driving you to realize and come to terms with so that you embrace it and then you exude and execute art that you want to make yeah. so yeah and i think that's what this podcast is about right yeah that, that's great and um you know we're gonna we're gonna do so much uh, so many different things um we're gonna have guests on um of some of your favorite artists and some people that you probably don't know mm-hmm. um you know to come on and share their stories of, of being artists and um spirituality we're going to talk about mindset there's going to be just so many topics we cover but Mm -hmm. the premise of it for the most part will be talking directly to the artist which you know you may not even realize you're an artist but after watching this podcast hopefully we're able to kind of talk to the artist in you Mm -hmm. um true because everyone is an artist yeah yeah just maybe you you're not at a stage where you realize that there's so much within you that you want to one share but then also just own a relationship with yourself too because i think that's another really beautiful part about art because you discover so much about yourself that everything you make you're like oh i didn't realize that was in me i didn't know i had those emotions i didn't realize that i move in a certain way when i'm like on camera or i'm painting or i'm singing or i'm dancing so hopefully this is like a space where you're listening you're like hmm Maybe I should hop on that, you know, creative hobby that I had where, you know, maybe it's not just a hobby. It's something that you dedicate more time to and you pencil it in your schedule, you know? Yeah, which is pretty much what happened to us, right? Like we were having these conversations (laughs) at work probably every every Tuesday when we were in the office. Mm -hmm. Um, Like just about spirituality, about art, about um, life. And like Mm -hmm. these conversations eventually turned into like, I guess me waking up one day and saying hey Jenny you want to just put this on camera because I think like we're we're talking yeah. about things that can probably help people so that was like the kind of the spawn of this yeah. um, whole creation and totally. we had to tap into some uncomfortable places where like we didn't even realize that this is probably what we're supposed to do or the artist in us is supposed to do this particular thing but um, hopefully in our journey trying to do this that'll help bring you in your journey oh uh, yeah, yeah and bring people along will help you in your journey of trying to do whatever um you're trying to do in your end in regards to art or uh, creativity in general so um yeah, giving people c- confidence to exactly. do it though yeah exactly so yeah. that's the that's the reason why and the how of this particular podcast the art and the easel um but backing up a little bit we're going to start off our podcast Mm -hmm. every time we come on the show a little bit differently than you know how you may have seen other podcasts so we're going to start off with like a mini like meditation and kind of like um mindfulness exercise what do you call it 
I would just say like a mindful moment. A mindful moment. Yeah. I like that. Because it doesn't have to be like a full. B- I mean, meditation would be like a second, you know, or ten seconds, or ten seconds. It could be, you know, anything you really want it to be. I think it's just as long as you're being present and being really passive to any thoughts that come in. It's more about yeah. just like centering yourself. So yeah, yeah. And um, it's kind of like for us too because we are like super nervous when it comes to doing stuff like this. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about this before oh. the camera started, but like um, this part is like for you all, but it's also a little bit selfish in the sense of of us like needing to like recenter ourselves before we even dive into um, trying to help someone. We have to be yeah. centered ourselves. So, um, totally. do you want to lead us in this mindful moment, Gina? Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll start by closing our eyes um, wherever you are. If you're standing and you feel comfortable closing your eyes, close your eyes. If you're sitting or you're like, I don't want to close my eyes yet. I want to like get comfortable and cozy. Go ahead and do that. Um, So find a position that you're comfortable with and close your eyes. Um, Make sure that you're comfortable. So if that's lying down or sitting, again, it's about being comfortable. Um, With your eyes closed, make sure that you're breathing intentionally meaning that you're not um trying to rush into this practice um but we'll do it all together i'm closing my eyes too as well and we'll breathe in and breathe out and we'll do that two more times and we'll breathe in And we'll breathe out. And the last time, we'll breathe in. And breathe out. How are we feeling? I feel good. Yeah, I do too. I feel better. I feel better. Um, I've never (laughs) meditated with a mic in my hand, but... Neither have I. (laughs) Neither have I. (laughs) So that was the first time, but... um, I think, um, yeah, I think we're ready to start. Awesome. Let's go. Let's um, hopefully it. that was helpful for everyone. Um, I guess the first question that we want to kind of pose to you all, because mm-hmm. we want this to be really engaging. I so, want it to be interactive. Like the questions yeah. that we're asking each other and when we start having like guests in here and we start asking our guests, like this, is, this isn't this is a question only for me or Gina or the mm-hmm. guests. Um, this is a question for you all to answer as well. To so, like, over and share. Yeah. Think of it that way. Whenever we ask any question that we want to like that we want to discuss, it's going to be be a question for you all too. So, mm-hmm. we want you to have your thought and your opinion on whatever we're talking about because no way is going to be the right way. What me and Gina totally. are going to be saying up here aren't going to be like Bible. In fact, um, yeah, this isn't going to be like the end all be all to like what needs to be done because we are still figuring out life ourselves um and everyone um has a different take so agreed plus one plus one plus one exclamation mark (laughs) bolded Um, underline highlighted um, the first the first question is what does art mean to you what is the art what is the art yeah i think the art is something whether that's any medium that you focus on that is representative of a time of your present emotion or state of where your head's at or your heart or your energy or anything in your life. I think it's just, I almost think this might be really related to photography, but I think art is just an encapsulation of who you are in the moment. And it's a practice also of believing that you can fully express yourself authentically without having to um, curate yourself in any way, too. Yeah. What do you think the art is? Okay. Um, I think the art is honestly a form of expression. Mm -hmm. Um a form of expression that is coming from somewhere that um that that isn't like seen 
So it's coming from like an invisible place. And I think it's the manifestation of whatever is inside of you um, into like an, a uh, physical representation of like, like what life, like into the actual life. So mm. I think it's the invisible turning into the visible. That's the definition I would use as far as art. It's taking That's a great yeah, way to put it. Taking taking the invisible and turning it into the visible in whatever aspect. So like back mm-hmm. to what you were saying in the beginning of like what is um like anyone can be art. I think mm-hmm. art is taking that um script that's in your head and mm-hmm. turning it into an actual manuscript. Mm. Taking that song lyric that you just wrote or the melody that you just wrote in your head and mm-hmm. putting it on actual paper and making notes, right? Um mm-hmm. so I think it's just really taking the invisible and turn it into a visible representation of whatever you um, think is appropriate. So that's why art can yeah. be anything. Totally. Art can totally. be how we breathe and how we yeah. communicate. Um, it's just taking that invisible. Totally. It's also, I feel like, not the final outcome either. Yeah. It's the also the process of it. So say, like, if someone makes a video or a painting, it's also the inspiration and yeah. how it hit you and inspired you. And then also all the inner workings of putting that together because i think art is also a practice it's like believing in every step of the journey of why you're making it how you're making it um so yeah i also think that's that's art as well yeah it's like the transition like you were saying when you're something's going invisible to visible it's also that journey within itself that's art yeah and yeah. just tapping into like what you just said a little bit of like the how someone makes art um do you think artists have responsibility or is the responsibility yeah. not on the artist but on the person who's perceiving the art is that who holds the responsibility I think the one that holds the responsibility is the artist hmm. but both should be accountable hmm because the art is bringing someone awareness, right? Yeah. It's exposing you to knowledge and the viewer and the consumer should, I don't, okay, I don't, I'm getting better at not saying shoulds in like definite words, but um, it would be lovely. I'll just use that for right now. It would be lovely if the viewer and the consumer takes that opportunity of knowledge being passed down to them or being communicated to them to take it into action and apply it into their life Mm -hmm. because sometimes knowledge is limited you know accessibility to art sometimes is limited right and sometimes people don't get the opportunity to experience and learn about certain things and so when there is an you know an artist who's showing their art that could bring awareness and expand your mind in certain ways about several topics or that might prompt you to you know, put yourself in someone else's shoes. I do think the viewer and the consumer is accountable for how they they view and consume that art. You yeah. know, how do they apply it in their life? Yeah. You know? I agree to a certain extent. Okay. Um, but that that's a great take. And I think um I think my perspective on it is more like, yes, I think the responsibility is on the artist. Mm-hmm. However, if it's true art and they're their um well, what is true art what do you mean by true I, art i guess art that is just from like from whatever their reality is like okay. because again it goes back to the whole idea of like what is bad art but mm-hmm. if like i want to make a song about something that you may not necessarily agree with mm-hmm. um or dark humor or whatever the case may be mm-hmm. that's just my reality mm-hmm. and i have a responsibility of how it affects people but then also i think at the same time it's like if this is my truth, then is it my responsibility to control how you view my truth or is it just my truth? Mm. But so like I think there's a fine line like there you said. Is a fine, there's um, nuances for sure. I think I think I think um where a lot of artists who like, you know, don't who who don't really um have the responsibility or like share the responsibility are not mm-hmm. providing context to their art. Right. So totally. I think context is also important in putting anything out. If you want to put out something extremely controversial, um, I think providing context to that 
will help the perceiver of the same rank. So, like, totally. we're not saying don't create what you want to create. Create, yeah. We're, be authentic. Be and, authentic. Like, speak to your truth. Be you. But it might be also helpful to add a framework to what the art is. Where is know? it coming from? Like, what yeah. context is around it? Is this just satire? Are yeah. you just joking? Yeah. Like, um, and I think that's where a lot of people get um, a little uh, confused. It's like, okay, I'm going to say this, like, crazy joke out there. But it doesn't really sound like a joke, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say it anyway. But actually providing content is like, yo, I'm just joking about this or coming out and like, you know, writing your wrongs or whatever. Or putting out like, hey, I don't actually believe that popping yeah. perks or whatever is like um, like the viral song right now. Popping perks is yeah. like good for your health. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that and I'm going to put out this like catchy song. I'm not mm -hmm. just going to put out this catchy song and just like let it um, go out into the ether and mm -hmm. like let people like form their own opinions. No, I'm mm -hmm. going to put my put some context around like the art that I'm putting out as well because I think it helps people to not take things so literal sometimes I think with the art very true and I think that's where it gets really like a muddly gray area of the art and the artist and yeah. if you don't know the artist very well like you don't have that context either you yeah. know I think of like music and music fandoms it's like their opinions on a piece is going to be very different from someone who just listens to them to that artist for the first time because they have more context on how that artist expressed themselves yeah. because they've heard their previous album or their interviews or you know they have this more holistic view so it is a little bit easier um so it's hard it's really hard yeah yeah, yeah and i yeah i think just on the perceiving side of things if if the artist is not going to provide context then we have to like i don't, I don't want to say assume context and like just assume like mm -hmm. certain things but i think that's where um that's mm -hmm. where it's it comes to what like we were saying in the beginning of like not taking what we say as fact either mm -hmm. um i guess not perceiving art as fact and just like mm -hmm. if we all understand that art is coming from an invisible place that of that particular person and not from like fact mm -hmm. um, and that it may be perceived to them as like their opinions or their life story, then we can like take art for what it's worth and not mm -hmm. for fact all the time. And that would, that, that would lead us to not taking things so personal or so not true. taking art. So um, literal in some instances, mm -hmm. like it's definitely powerful, but I think it is also important to, um, you know, like, provide context for the people that aren't providing context for themselves in some instances totally so. yeah taking it for what it is and trying not to project our own judgments or biases yeah. onto it and what do you think the easel what do, what do y'all think the easel means yeah the going easel. back to our self-titled <laughs> the art and the easel yeah um i think the easel um the easel is, if I'm using the definition of the art of being like taking the invisible and turning it into the visible, mm -hmm. I think the easel is where the invisible concepts and creations and thoughts and um, manuscripts and, and, um, jokes and all the where the invisible lives like that dark space where the invisible is mm. that's that's the easel that's that space easel. is the easel what what is your opinion on the easel what do you think the easel is i i feel like i go back and forth with what the easel is i feel like at the moment i feel like the easel is the world the world is an easel and we are the art like humans are the art and mm. we when we make art we're reflecting on our environment and how it's affected us and the art is a reflection of that i feel like yeah the world is the easel mm. That's what I, how I think of it. Hmm. And then we reflect and project back on the easel of like what we think of this world and our culture and um, 
all the things that happen like yeah the way we comment on things the way we express ourselves is a reflection of the easel and then our art is a result of that yeah if that makes sense yeah um the the blank canvas it's the blank canvas yeah, yeah i also feel like it's the medium as well mm -hmm. um in terms of not the medium i feel like the easel is sometimes the vehicle as well to the message if that makes sense yeah it's yeah i get it i get what you're saying it's the yeah. it's how it's packaged mm -hmm. it's like um the art within um the the vessel exactly the vessel or the this this body totally um like it, we're the canvas essentially exactly and yeah. also i feel like the easel because it's the medium you choose to communicate your message it changes also the framework of the story you're trying to tell um you could talk about a coming of age story in a photo versus a film about yeah. it and it's going to look entirely different but the message could be the same it's more so the easel is different the yeah. medium itself is different um but it's trying to communicate the the same thing it's more so that that person's experience um it aligned with them more so to share that in a still image or an animation video or a painting yeah so i think the easel as well functions as the medium of how you're trying to communicate the message yeah i agree yeah. i agree yeah we, we, i guess the next person to ask is the person that, that that's listening what the easel yeah what the easel means for Our you listeners. all because i think um what like you know back to like the chicken or the egg what came first the chicken or the egg uh <laughs> what, what came first the art or the easel <laughs> like that's, um, a, that's, a, that's a great that's a great question I feel like the easel did. Hmm. I think the easel did. Yeah. I think so. I feel because like, the easel is also, aside from the medium, it's the initiator for creation. Hmm. You know? It's like, the tools at our disposal that we feel we could utilize to tell our story. Yeah. Like this microphone, you know, or a paintbrush or e even our bodies or um, a camera, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I feel think like the easel comes first. What do you think? I feel like you're going to say art. I think, no, I, I think it's like <laughs> one, I think it's one of those things where, you know how when the whole, the, what came first what came first the chicken or the egg mm -hmm. like no like everyone has a different opinion because yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. right answer there is I no right answer I think it's the same with the art and the easel because I think the art came first why do the, you think it came first but I agree there is no right answer because like because it, the art it, the art is the invisible mm -hmm. just using my definition of art being the invisible turn to the visible mm -hmm. um but if art started as the invisible that was without the easel being there um and mm -hmm. i think we all come into this world with something to give it mm. like that was predestined mm -hmm. that was before we even were even thought of mm -hmm. that was before 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 anything, before the world was e even even created, I think a purpose was there first. Mm. Like the purpose for our life mm -hmm. and the manifestation of our life, the purpose it's of it, the, the manuscript, the 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 what we were supposed, what gift we were supposed to get, supposed to give to this world was already predestined um, before the the easel came along. Mm. So that's why I think like the idea, the 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 passions, the 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 gifts, the mm -hmm. um, the talents, and all that was there before you were even created and formed into this vessel. Yeah. And I think the easel just came after the art. The art was what created the easel. Interesting. Because 
think about it from this perspective like people wouldn't make easels the ma- like actual physical easels like the ones if that we didn't build, have art if we didn't have art like there would be no reason for blick and <laughs> michaels <laughs> and shout out blick and, and michaels. right shout out blick and michaels yeah. like there wouldn't be no there wouldn't be any reason for these people to manufacture actual easels if people weren't doing art art, if the art wasn't there Mm -hmm. because there would be no demand for it so i think the art had to come first Mm. but again the chicken or the egg yeah we will never know i think it's both i think i feel like the easel where it fits in in that it's the space to share the art though yeah but i that makes sense of what you're saying but you need something to share first yeah making the art and that was yeah. already predestined. Predestined from us. And why do you think, I'm curious to hear, art is so important. It's so essential. Because you've spoken about like predestined purpose and yeah. expression and like being authentic and pouring out what is being tapped into your heart and spirit and mind. Why do you think it's so important? Um, I, like I think it leaves a speechless truth right right no <laughs> is it no. that important at I, least for me I think about it. it's like how could it not be important is where my mind immediately goes but I think yeah. it's because you know the whole old saying was done in the dark has to come to the light yeah um, I think it goes back to this um, the definition that I, I mentioned of like t- taking the invisible and making it visible and you expand on the note you made about things growing in the dark. Um, I don't know. It's like, I don't know the science behind this. And I actually probably should because I was a biology major. But <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you know how they say like plants need like sunlight? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Plants need sunlight, but also they need the soil and they need what happens like beneath the, the soil and like that dark that dark the inner workings. that inner workings that happens um what what else it, there's there's so many great things that happen in the dark um like we can't watch a movie um without the dark right the, uh, at, at the movie that theater has no light right or right. analog photography you're in a dark room you or, literally can't have any light in there some people can sleep with the lights on but we need the dark when we sleep mm-hmm. um we we see dark when we sleep. Um, that's how we yeah. rejuvenate ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like if if I went to sleep and saw a bright light the whole time I was sleeping, I would wake up exhausted. <laughs> the <laughs> range of my light, of zest of life because I didn't get quality freaking sleep. Yeah. Because all you True. saw was light when you closed your eyes. Yeah. Imagine that. Like when we closed our eyes, we saw light. When we see these studio lights. <laughs> like, <laughs> we would never escape it so i think we need the dark um in order to appreciate the light so that's why art is important so uh, it's the appreciation aspect of it like if i if i'm not able to share the gifts and like the talents and what's been working in the dark then i won't appreciate my talents i don't think do you think and a question for everyone also listening do you think art is meant to be shared because i know we've We've talked about this before. Yeah, let's speak personal art, terms. Do you think your art, art is, is meant a, to be shared? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. You, <laughs> I I don't think all meant all art is meant to be shared. No, I think um, I feel like there's art that you make to express and connect and communicate with other people to foster relationship with others and then i think there's also art that you make that is truly intentional that it's only for you like it's selfishly just for you and your relationship yeah and to discover more about yourself through your own self-discovery and your own analysis and thinking and meditating on you the self Mm -hmm. Um, and your own personhood and your own autonomy of how you navigate things. So I do think that some art is not meant to be shared. I think it's about 
you growing your connection to your own heart, your own mind and expanding yourself. And then I think there's times where you do that to build community and connect with others and bring all sorts of an array of emotions. But I think, yeah, there's, there's I love it. art that has to be for you sometimes too. I love it. So art, yeah, I love that. So all art is not meant to be shared, but mm-hmm. all art is meant to be expressed. Yes, exactly. All art has should not not to not use should. the word should, but like art is more so about all expression. It's just maybe some is kept for your own heart and your own mind. Because if it's not expressed, is it art? I don't think it's art because I think art is a practice. It's an expression. It's an expression. It's also I think a verb. It's yeah. It's an action. It's. Yeah, I think it's like meditating, I think, is an art. I think the way you talk is an art, I think, because it's it's expression. It's you putting your energy out there, whether it's in a tangible form, whether it's in movement or or things of that sort. I I think, Gina, in, in what you just said, you probably gave so many people that felt bad about not sharing their art some yeah, new life feel bad. um bad. no really though like because <laughs> yeah. you, you know how many people like Mm-mm. live with that guilt of feeling like like mm-hmm. okay like i like drawing but i i, ne- I don't want to share it like mm-hmm. i, I don't want to share it and like that that's okay right yeah, because totally like okay. everyone's not going to be a sharer like you know there are going to be mm-hmm. some artists that i was watching a, a really good um i was watching one of my favorite podcasts is the pivot podcast um with um Really with Ryan Clark, uh, Channing Crowder, and um, uh, Freaky Freddy. Mm-hmm. I, uh, that's that's what they call him on the show. But they were talking to Geno Smith, and um, he was the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, and he was mentioning why he doesn't talk, like why he doesn't speak um, as loud as like you know the alpha male quarterback in the NFL should speak, and like how they should be rah rah all the time. Mm-hmm. And he basically said, I can't really think of the philosopher exactly, but he either said Socrates or Plato um, or Aristotle, one of them. One of I them. just named three different ones. Um, but one of them, he said, he learned because he said this particular philosopher never like wrote down anything. Mm. He never put anything to paper. Mm-hmm. How he expressed himself was through his friends and that's how his messages got put out there right Mm -hmm. every someone else did the expression for him right someone else did the writing for him he like someone else was a messenger and i think um yeah back to what we were just saying it it doesn't necessarily have to be shared all the time Mm -hmm. it can be expressed Mm -hmm. in so many different ways that may not be what we expect as consumers sometimes Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to appreciate all art because for them, for someone to like take the step Mm -hmm. to get to the sharing portion of being an artist, Mm -hmm. that takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of guts, but it also, it takes a lot of guts to not share too. Exactly. Again, no, really it does. Those that don't want to share. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. It takes a lot of guts just to be an artist. Yeah. Just to express. Exactly. It takes a lot to... Because it's a very vulnerable act, even if you're not going to share it, because you are processing all sorts of thoughts and emotions and, yeah. and so many things in your internal world and finally dedicating some time and space, being really mindful of like, this is how I feel. I want to lean into this. And I think that takes a lot of courage. And I think instead of hiding away from it, you're actually leaning into it and giving it its proper time and space and efforts, which is courageous. Yeah, very courageous. Wow. Very powerful. And that's why art is so important. Yeah. It's so important. Well, I think this I is think like the wrap. I think for, we're gonna wrap it for, up for this episode. Like that was a great first, note to end on, Gina. Yeah, I like agree. you gave people so much, you know, like hope, like in regards to being an artist, being courageous to just express it, whether you share it or not, mm-hmm. you're still being an artist. And I think 
that that alone yeah like hopefully like helps helps yeah. people if you didn't hear anything else in this whole thing yeah and for some reason you fast forwarded to the last like minute <laughs> <laughs> take away that everyone's an artist you are free to express yourself authentically whether that be in private and public if you're sharing your art just for yourself in your room while you're painting or making a video or you're going to share it out on a public platform yeah. on social media or a gallery anything at the end of the day we're all artists and we're all valid um and i know those listening i say valid a lot but that will be sprinkled in this podcast a lot just validating anyone who makes art and wants to express themselves in any way or if you haven't made art that's valid too um it's all a journey to find what is in you that you want to tap into and get to know better. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love well, it. thank you so a- much for listening to thank everyone you, yeah. who's still here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, first listening. episode done. Um, again, next one, um, we'll, we'll definitely have some people on, um, over the next, like, you know, a few episodes and, um, you know, we're really excited and hopefully this was a help for you all and yeah. catch you in the next episode. And Thank you for listening to episode. The Art and the Easel. It's a wrap. First episode. It's a wrap. All right. Bye, Peace. everyone.